If you're a CrossFitter looking to recover better after wads, then stick around because in this video, I'm going to be going over some simple recovery tips that I wish someone would have told me before I started CrossFit. Let's go. Hey, my name is Michael Groff and the goal of this channel is to help new CrossFitters get fitter, faster, and stronger in the sport. I review CrossFit related products as well as provide tips that have helped me in my own CrossFit training. So if you're a CrossFitter looking to increase your performance, consider joining the team by subscribing and hitting that notification bell. So before we actually get into the tips, we have to first distinguish the difference between active recovery and passive recovery. In a short answer, you would be doing active recovery when you're cooling down after a wad by doing some light rowing. An example of passive recovery recovery is when you're sleeping. When you're sleeping, your body uses that time to repair its muscles, among a lot of other things. And while it's very important that you prioritize both forms of recovery, in this video, I'm going to be giving tips on active recovery. So the first tip that I'm going to give you is one that you might not expect, and that is properly warming up before doing a wad. Now, before you click out of this video and be like, what a stupid, obvious tip. I didn't need him to tell me that. Let me explain. Now this tip was taught to me by the second fittest man in the world, Brent Fikowski. And by the way, if you want to check out his online coaching program, just check out this playlist up in the corner right here. So before your wad, start by hopping on an air bike, a rower, or a treadmill. If you're using this tip before you have done any warm up so far, then use your equipment of choice to warm up for a few minutes before you go into the next step. Once you've warmed up for a few minutes, you want to go into the next step, which is sprint for about 20 seconds. After you sprinted for about 20 seconds, continue with your normal warm-up routine, or if you've already warmed up, then rest for a few minutes before you do your wad. The reason you want to do this is very simple. You want to elevate your heart rate to your max heart rate before you start your wad. The reason this is helpful is because when you do your wad, after doing the specific warm-up, your nervous system is not as shocked once going into the wad. This doesn't put as much stress on your body, and it will actually help you recover faster after the wad is over. My second tip might seem obvious at first, but I see a lot of CrossFitters failing to do it and that is cooling down after a wad. Tell me in the comments if this following example resonates with you or you've seen someone do it. Okay, so you just finished a wad and it feels like the hardest wad you've ever done in your life. You're laying in a pool of sweat and at the moment you're just questioning your insanity on why you ever put your body through this torture. After the wad is over, you might go to the restroom or just stand around and talk with your fellow CrossFitters on just how ugly that wad was and what you could have done better. And after you're done talking, you leave the gym, get in your car and continue to go on with your day. Tell me in the comments if that seems familiar. But the problem with that is, is you're not actively cooling down after your wad. A lot of new CrossFitters, me included when I just started, fail to realize that recovery starts immediately after your workout is over. Immediately after your wad is over, you need to be thinking how you can optimize your recovery so that you're good to go the next day. And a practical way to do that is after a wad, hop on a piece of cardio, such as an air bike, a rower, or a treadmill, it doesn't really matter, and then lightly cool down for about 10 minutes or so. This helps to flush the lactic acid out of your muscles and will actually reduce your muscle soreness. Trust me, it works. Some other ways that you can do some active recovery is when you're at home, consider using a foam roller or a lacrosse ball. This is a great way to alleviate pain and reduce muscle soreness, tightness, and inflammation. If you've never used a foam roller or a lacrosse ball before, I created a playlist with some great instructional videos on how to use those tools properly. I'll link to the playlist in the description below if you want to check it out. Also, if you don't have a foam roller or a lacrosse ball and you need to get one, I'll link to those as well in the description. Cheers. 